<laughs> so, so, you know, it's not a, it's not a difficult question. I think I even give you, well, okay, I don't give you the formula, but you can look up the equation in the section. And um, so the question is relatively simple. It's asking what is the magnitude of gravitational force between two masses of a certain mass separated by some distance? And let me just find the formula in the section and have it on the side so that I don't have to write it down or memorize it or do anything. Um, in the Newton's law of universal gravitation, uh, there it is. That's the expression that gives me the Newton's law of universal gravitation. The force of gravity is some constant times product of masses divided by the distance squared. And um, I, I just wanted to demonstrate it on a calculator and, um, and show you one tool that I think I actually do demonstrate elsewhere again, but uh, worth showing. So, so um, well, I'll just uh, calculate it. Um, this is how you do it on a calculator. So I have a Windows calculator that uh, kind of works similar to most uh, scientific calculators. So I think this is the good one to use to demonstrate uh, some of the ways of entering um, the numbers in scientific notation and all that stuff. So let me do the easy part first. The easy part here is um, this uh, the second half of the calculation, the product of masses divided by the distance squared. So product of the masses, three times three <laughs> divided by, and many of the scientific calculators these days will have this parenthesis. They are sometimes useful to just to clarify order of operation. I want to make sure that I'm dividing by the distance of one. I guess I don't actually have to do this, but one. And I want to make sure that I square it before I divide, so square. And uh, I think the way order works, it would have done the square first anyway, but I just want to be extra sure. And I want to make sure I close the parenthesis. So I have three times three divided by this number. And now I'm going to multiply with this uh, G constant. And this is where you have to um, remember a little bit of scientific notation, which is that, uh, you know, it comes in these two parts. You have this, uh, let me just put this here. You have this leading part um, that, I forget what it's called. Well, you have this leading part and you have the second part that is the power 10 to the power of minus 11. And a lot of scientific calculators will give you a way to enter this in a compact way. And on this one, it's labeled this, this EXP symbol. And this is how I would enter that on this scientific calculator. 6.674, and then uh, exponent, the EXP stands for times 10 to the power of, and this number here is gonna be what that power is. It'll be 11 and change the sign to minus. So the 6.674E uh, minus 11 stands for 6.674 times 10 to the minus 11. So when I hit equal sign, this is what I get. <laughs> and now here's where you do have to be careful. If I were to simply put this in 0 0.000000006, it'll say it's wrong. And it's not just because I missed a not zero or anything like that. Um, what I missed is that I'm supposed to answer in pico newtons. And uh, if I work, if you work out all these units with this uh, G times M times M over R squared, the unit you have is Newtons, not piconewtons. That's what Hint was getting at. Um, note that one piconewton is 10 to the minus 12 Newton. So what you essentially have to do is convert from this uh, Newton answer into a piconewton answer. So uh, let me see if I can, yeah, I can write this in scientific notation. So uh, let me just do that unit conversion quickly. I think I have other videos that illustrate unit conversion that I think you saw as part of chapter one, but uh, let me just do this here in context as a, another example here. So, uh, so this is how you do unit conversion. You start out with a number you have, which is uh, six point, uh, let me say zero one times 10 to the minus 10 newtons, that's my unit. 
And the way I like to think of all unit conversions uh, is as a multiplying by one. So I'm multiplying with a factor that, that is effectively one because I'm going to construct this factor so that the numerator and the denominator is the same quantity. And that's where this equality sign is important. I'm going to use these two quantities. And I want to place them in a way that this uh, unwanted sign is canceled out. This Newton, I want to get rid of it. And I want to have a Pico Newton in its place. So what I want here is Newton on the denominator so that they will cancel out and Pico Newton on the numerator so that I will be left with the Pico Newton. So looking at here, I say, okay, um, so I should have uh, one Pico Newton is equal to 10 to the minus 12 Newton. Also, I need to take this number and divide it by 10 to the minus 12. That's what I need to do. So let me go do that. Um, take this number, divide, divide it by, and I'll use that E notation again. Uh, here, I need to have a leading one, just to say that it's one times 10 to the power of minus 12. So times 10 to the power of minus 12. Okay, when I say equals, I get, oh, let me, um, I guess you can actually enter it two ways. You can enter it this way. You can, uh, so I see here, 601, uh, rounding it to three significant figures. I can say 601 pico newtons. That is one way. And for most of the questions, you can actually enter this in, uh, 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 you can actually enter this uh, with a scientific notation. So when my calculator was on this mode, this is a scientific notation. I mean, it's kind of unnecessary, but you can still do it. And this is how I can enter it, 6.01 E2. And this is, stands for times 10 to the mm, Let me see what I get. Yeah, yeah. I think the reason it was complaining was, um, I mean, for syntax, it kind of matters. It, I, it shouldn't really be capitally. That's how it's technically supposed to work. But the system is forgiving it. Um, if you use lowercase, it kind of tries to understand <laughs> what I mean by lowercase, which is what my calculator uses. So, so this is an illustration of doing this calculation using scientific notation on a scientific calculator. Now, um, I do realize that sometimes these calculator operations can get frustrating in that, um, like, you know, you feel like you know the concepts, you know what equation to use, you know what numbers to plug in, but you're just getting tripped up on the calculator step. And uh, there's a tool that can be very useful from time to time. And I just want you to know that, that it's there and its use is generally allowed in this class. It's basically an online calculator. So let me do the same calculation that I did on my calculator uh, on this. So it knows about a lot of different physical constants. So I can, instead of copying the value of G from here, I can actually say uh, gravitational constant and it'll understand what that is. Times uh, three kilogram. And actually when you're doing this calculation, it's important that you include a unit divide by one meter squared. And one of the nice thing about this tool is that it kind of tells you how it understood your input. It understood it as a G good, <laughs> times the product of the masses divided by the distance squared. And then it gives you the results. It gives you the results in many different units. In fact, the Pico Newtons is one of them. <laughs> so you could just copy and paste to that. <laughs> Um, and it also gives your answer in Newtons and other weird units. Um, so, so yeah, that's, a, um, so I, I guess, you know, it, it's a good to know how to use your calculator. That's a good practice. Um, but at the same time, if uh, somehow your calculator is frustrating you, then uh, this tool is quite useful. It's at oframalpha.com and uh, I'm fine with you using this uh, both on doing your homework and when you're doing timed assessments like next week, because mainly because of this won't really give you a remarkable advantage anyway. So I just want people to not get tripped on something minor like knowing how to use a scientific calculator. 
this class isn't the, I mean, I teach you because you kind of need to know, but it's not the class designed to teach you on how to use scientific calculator. 